this is Pat Moorhead, and we are live at VMware Explorer 2023 in Las Vegas on the show floor, but more importantly, in the Lenovo booth on the Explorer show floor. Daniel Neiman, how you doing? Good to be back. Good to be here. It's good to be in Las Vegas. It's just good. All is good. And look at it. I'm speaking really loud right now because I have to, because this place is packed. No, this place is packed, and literally five or six minutes ago, uh, there were probably about 150 people watching uh, one of the Lenovo uh, storytelling sessions, educational sessions. They all left, and we're going to get into a quick video here. And you know what? My favorite topic, our favorite topics over the last, I don't know, a couple of years, what is it? AI and multi-cloud. But we are here to talk about AI, and we are to talk about with Lenovo about what they're doing with AI, what they're doing with VMware. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I'll tell you, exciting times here. Great to be back. COVID's rare in a rear view mirror. Uh, this is awesome. Glad to be here. Thanks for the invite. Thanks, Mike, for coming on. Excellent. Appreciate that. Yeah, you heard Pat say, um, one of the things we've had a problem with, there just hasn't been a lot of AI talk this year. So, you know, we were like, we need to go to an event and talk about AI because no one's talking about it. But uh, no, in all serious, you know, enterprise AI, massive. Lenovo has been on the record talking about its billion dollar investment. We've heard from YY, talked to Kirk Scoggin, had a bunch of your, your, your colleagues on this show. Now you're with us. Yeah, thanks. Talk enterprise AI. Let's talk about, you know, the trend. Help me understand kind of the way Lenovo is positioning uh, enterprise AI. How are you helping companies get ready and preparing to invest in this AI future? I'll say that when we look at enterprise AI, we got to first make sure everybody has this on the same page. So the first thing we will do is we spend time with our partners. We start there, we become very partner forward. And then we start educating the baseline of our customers. So we're kind of unique. We, we you know, multinational, many different disciplines, big into laptops and the edge. So obviously that's where it's all being driven from. You gotta have something to, to touch. And so we establish that and then we start going back. We've been working on this since about 2017. Always. We announced, as you said, the one commitment this year. We've had multiple labs. We have actually three labs globally been running since 2018. Last year, we announced the AI Innovators Program, which really brought the ISVs. The other day, it's great to do models, great to do generative stuff, but you've got to have outcome-based. And so on the outcome-based side of things, we focused in on reaching out to top ISVs, working with them, putting them on our workbenches, really showing how AI and applications work well together, and then creating a value proposition to our customers. We actually have business development teams out there working with our customers because it's so new. It's so new, where to go? In the cloud, hybrid, on-prem, many discussions we had had. Yeah, so um, Mike, as industry analysts, right, we uh, watch what Lenovo does, we talk to enterprises, we look at what your, your competitors do, and in the green room conversation you and I were having, you know, I commented about your strategy in software. It's really clean. Yeah. And also in partners and even the channel is very clean. Um, and, you know, uh, by the way, I'll say that, you know, versus your competition. And, you know, you don't have a competitive stack. Um, uh, you're adding value, but you're not necessarily competing uh, with your with your partners. And I, and I do think there's value uh, in that. Now, when it comes to AI, can you talk in a little bit more specifics uh, about those relationships, how you're fostering them, and maybe talk about how they're different than, than that. And if there's any contrast between machine learning and deep learning AI and generative AI, how it's different maybe from analytics, uh, that'd be great. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot to unwrap there, it's awesome. So I, I am lucky enough to lead the product management, the product marketing management, and then some other parts of the business, particularly on software. And I'll say that to your original point, your initial point, we don't have a lot of burrs. You know, we don't have a lot. It's pretty clean cut the way we go to market. We know where we're good at and where we want to partner at. So I'll throw it into three buckets for us, right? Bucket number one, hardware. So we know that there's an evolution happening between the traditional hardware today. We started off with using traditional servers, traditional servers, 
But as AI becomes more prevalent, we need fit for purpose. What we get from those conversations allow us to build better products. So, well, and, in, and by the way, ahead, in the end, what starts in the hyperscale now will ultimately find its way on prem, not the edge, but in the enterprise data center. And that makes sense. And a lot of people sometimes forget what a player you are in hyperscale. A lot of people have exited that business, but with your ODM plus model, you found a way to make money, but also drive scale. That, that is so true. You know, when you think about the hyperscales, as you gentlemen know, they're fractions of a penny. And they're really frugal trying to figure out how to optimize everything they do. That comes downward in the development of the general product for the rest of the world. And so that's awesome. So, you know, bigger boxes, smaller boxes, you know, high CPUs at the right amount at the right place and right time, that all kind of ingests. And then our side of it, which is the software side of it, as you mentioned just a couple seconds ago, we know what we're good at. And so we're really focusing on two things, orchestration and automation. We're glue. We're really working with our partners. We're working with our hardware and we know where we're going to participate in the AI stack, you know, the evolving stack that's coming out. Yeah. And you might know you spent a few years at VMware. Just a couple. So you, you might know something about this. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I'm coming back to high school in a reunion every time I come back here. I, and it's great. I mean, bringing that value to Lenovo, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things funny. Everybody likes to separate themselves. I was a hardware guy. I'm a software guy. But it's like, it's all kind of coming together where it's really hard to be good at anything without being competent at both. That, that is true. And I'm kind of blessed. My career started originally in hardware way back when in Nortel, and that's a footnote in history, right? And then I moved, I saw, I had this passion for software. So I reported this guy named Brian Connors. You, you probably recognize the name. I may have seen him Just a couple on the ago. floor. I don't know. Yeah. So when I came here, Brian said, Mike, you got a blank sheet of paper. Let's go make some magic. And so he's been an amazing supporter. Um, Kirk, as you know, beyond amazing supporter and all the way up to YY. They want to make this happen. They're committed to it. That $1 billion is, is a resonating where that investment's coming from. So you talk about your history at VMware. Let's take history and fast forward to today. VMware, Lenovo, now it's a partnership. You know, this is complex stuff to, to deliver the future of generative AI. Talk a little bit about what was announced here, the role that Lenovo has to play and the opportunity that you see that it creates by bringing together the power of Lenovo and the power of VMware? Uh, that's, that, that's a great question. So I was really excited to be part, or us as an organization, be part of this. It's not an I, it's really a we. When, when NVIDIA, because we have a long lasting relationship with them, and VMware came to us and talked to us about this, and this was months ago, and told us what they were doing, we were all in. So we pivoted our architects, we got our engineers, we got our early developers, we got some alphas and betas, some what if situations on the table. We started working. We're similar to like cobblers, you know, on, on a bench, just making it all happen. So uh, I'll say to you right now that it was probably about six months of intense, intense work going on and tight collaboration between these three companies. As a result of it, we will in one month have the first iteration. And you can get a glimpse of it if you talk to your salespeople, like all the prep stuff is done. We're talking to our field, the field's enabled already to be with this timing. We're already working on software. Yesterday I had two or three meetings where I couldn't share this with just partners who are gonna be the stack above this. I think this is super exciting. I think the generative AI piece is really a, the cornerstone we're gonna start with, but that's not where we're gonna end with. Are there any specific, uh, I like to call them uh, areas of heat, uh, workloads or use cases yeah. that uh, customers or partners or partners customers are gravitating toward right now? Well, I think that answer comes back in twofold. One, where are you good at, right? See the Lenovo, large multinational global company. So we find ourselves gravitating a lot of manufacturing or they have partners that they can communicate with. We're able to cover that gap and do that. So manufacturing definitely. Other side is retail. Retail's not global so much unless you're doing the big, big boys. And luckily enough, we do have quite a big, big boys out there. And so uh, that's, that's quite exciting as well. So I'll say 
retail, we'll say uh, manufacturing, and then it starts to get into other areas of it. We see, of course, education, we see higher ed. That's kind of neat, but that's not the strong suit of it. Finance and banking, very fit for purpose, very vertical, but the manufacturing retail is the broad side of it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So we talked a little bit about uh, AI, essentially your, the way you approach software uh, with partners and inside of uh, Lenovo, but the edge is, is a huge part of, of what your division and Lenovo provides. In fact, both Dan and I did research notes on your latest uh, edge announcements and they had made a claim that said, we have the broadest edge and I'm like, okay, I'm an analyst, I'm gonna do a fact check here. Show me the data. And again, this is not opinion, this is fact. Lenovo does in fact right now have the broadest edge portfolio out there. You want big edge, you want small edge, you, you want, want air-cooled big, big? edge, right. you want liquid-cooled, you want GPUs, you want CPUs, you want ARM, you want, anyways, you, you get the point. Yes, Can I you do. talk a little bit about some of the announcements that VMware made here on the edge and how that is going to impact, or what, what does that mean for Lenovo? Well, we'll say, let's start with that VMware question. First of all, the world changed when Charles Furland, and I know who you know, he runs our edge business. He's been Lenovo. on the 6.5 three times. At least. Veteran. That doesn't surprise me. Yes. That doesn't surprise me. I'm yes. His pivot into the business really brought a lot of fresh air and a lot of direction. So I would say by 2018, we, the cast was die. We we're going to go into edge. Number two was we wanted to go big with VMware. We knew they wanted to push on the edge. So we signed an agreement with them. And so there's two parts of the business. We're doing this generative AI direction with VMware. We have a whole new organization that has been jointly invested with two of them that are at the tip of the spear out in the field. I have a lab that we co-invested with, brand new. It's gotta be state of the art. Out of Austin, Texas, in your backyard, right there, right? Oh, here we go. So reach out to Austin. So. Uh, they have connections to all the multi-clouds. We brought in our experts. We've been working already as a result of this announcement today. We have organic software kind of playing learning. So we're eating our own dog food and using that stuff. So those are the type of things. And then we invested just as much as we did in the data center and the multi-cloud directions you heard as we did in the edge. Hardware is the core and we're doing a lot of information on data sets and storage. So most of the data we're seeing is collected at the edge. We see a lot of stuff moving back to the core or to the cloud, but we know it's not that long, which you'll start seeing some sort of edge cloud or some form of modeling being created at the edge. And that's the next big window that we're jumping into. Yeah, it was really important for VMware to, to really lean into a smaller package for the edge. Yeah. Because quite frankly, a lot of folks kind of moved in and, and the footprint, but uh, seeing, you know, vSAN for smaller edges, uh, you know, a drive through doesn't need the full power of VMware and Lenovo, quite frankly, than in what I call the edge on a, on, that has tiled aluminum flooring, right? There's a big difference between those environments. I, I, I totally see that. You know, we are lucky enough to be participating in some very large global retail chains. And at first you might look at that and say, wow, that's kind of scary. They're understanding and they're studying all about their customer. But if you can look at the other side of that coin, they're trying to cater to that customer. And so everything from sensors on the, as you approach or as you order, it is a, it is a just in time market. It is something that our, our customers are striving for to reach and understand and, dr and drive more of that. So generative AI, AI models at the edge, making the decisions, ingesting them in. It's, it's exciting times, I'll tell you, it's just amazing. Yeah, the retail space is very interesting. I actually spent some time with the Lenovo team at NRF. I don't make it every year, but I, uh, we did some really big research that ended up being part of the main keynote last year on resiliency in retail. And so it was a very interesting coming out of the pandemic, what's going on, but the generative applications, Mike, very, very exciting stuff. I think we could probably keep this conversation going, but we're gonna do you a favor 
and give you back a little time. We know this booth is crowded with customers. I'm sure a lot of people here that you need to talk to, but in all serious, it's been a lot of fun having it you with so us. It went so fast. I'll tell you, gentlemen, thank you very much. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Fun. Thanks so much thank for joining us. Thank Mike. you, Thanks. thank you. We'll have to have you again soon. Looking forward to it. All right, everyone. We're here at VMware Explorer 2023 in Las Vegas. You heard it here. We talk Gen AI, we talk multi-cloud, we talk about a lot, but if you want to hear more from us, you need to hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of the episodes here at VMware Explorer, but also just for all the 6.5 shows because, well, they're awesome. And so for this one, time to say goodbye. We'll see y'all later.